Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is obviously on a good journey to um, yeah, rally in the third wave. That's currently the expectation um, since it just fulfills all the requirements of an impulse to the upside or we don't, well, we just don't have the five waves up yet, but um, that is the next stage the bulls need to achieve. So as you will remember, the idea was here around June, middle of June, that a turning point could be reached in our larger yellow trend reversal area. Um, the idea is that this is a 1-2 setup and Bitcoin um, bottomed in this wave too. It could still become a larger bearish pattern or a larger, I wouldn't say bearish pattern, but it would be a larger correction. Yeah. So let's talk about that as well. Um, but at the moment, as long as bullish support is holding, we can focus on higher. And that so far has guided as well, I believe. I did um, on this way up since the 15th of June, we formulated a support area that basically traveled with the price. It was never broken, therefore guiding as well for um, yeah higher price movements. So the idea was that a wave one peaked here on the 30th of March. We can debate if the wave one peaked here or actually here. Doesn't make a great difference in the short term. Then we came down in a corrective wave, a three wave structure. The idea currently due to the strong price movement to the upside, which nearly broke above resistance above the 14th of April high. The idea is that we have a good chance that we are now in a third wave. That is the expectation at this stage. Um, however, if bullish support breaks, it increases the probability significantly for a deeper drop and another reset of this wave to a little lower. Good news is Bitcoin still has a lot of space in its support area. So the yellow support area is obviously the area where in the current scenario price is or was expected to turn around. So far, we've seen a fairly impressive turnaround and price could be rallying in a third wave. However, without breaking really substantially above the April high at around about 30, 000, sorry, 31,200, we can't say for sure that this wave two is in. Okay, um, but... If it breaks above it, obviously probabilities will increase further that this two increase, this wave two is indeed in and the low has been formed. Until then, we have an alternative short-term bearish pattern. Nothing I would bet on at this stage, but it's something to be aware of. And that's the idea that this here is an A wave. This move up was a B wave and the move down in a C wave. Yeah, from a, I mean, from a time point of view, it will not look like this. The, the C wave is likely to be stretched out a little bit further. It would be quite a bit of a roller coaster ride. To be honest, to be honest, quite cheeky and annoying <laughs> if that plays out. And then um, that would indicate that the wave two is going to be reset. But I currently have no strong evidence for that. But it's worth knowing for risk management purposes that it is, of course, still possible that we could retest this yellow support area just a little bit lower and 22k is the bullish um, support area for that. As always, as soon as price gets into these regions, a turnaround can happen. Just always be aware of that as it happened here on the 15th of June and as it happened here on the 10th of March. These were the two main support areas that we had so far, the two main trend reversal areas in this bear market if we still are in one okay because if we started indeed a third wave rally we're probably not in a bear market anymore um yeah so the idea is at the moment we can focus on higher so the idea is that we are now in a third wave at least we can track this price movement minimum target for the third wave would be around 40k I talked about that before doesn't mean we have to get there but we should get there if support levels are holding and these support areas are exactly um, what the value of the anal uh, analysis is because it gives you the idea okay where are the pivot points at which levels do probabilities shift so as you can see the third wave should move up in five waves itself that is the ideal structure and within this first wave we're basically based on this assumption still in the first wave in the first wave we also again should get five waves up in an ideal world and we already can count a wave one. We can count a wave two, which was very shallow. We can count a third wave complete. Explained yesterday to you that I would like to see a little bit of a deeper dip into this support area here for the wave four, because if we don't get an extension or let's say a more substantial wave four, the risk is that this third wave simply extends, 
leaving it all a little bit uncertain, it is always important to get a nice structure in the chart and that these individual waves do not extend too much because um, if it extends too much, you get the problem that we might deal with a three-wave structure. I know it's a bit, it's a bit um, uh, complicated, but it's a bit of um, a paradox on in the crypt or no, in Elliott wave, which basically says that if a wave extends too much, it could simply be a high B wave. Don't get me, you know, I, I'm not gonna talk about that in too much detail. I don't want to confuse anybody. What I just want to bring across here is the idea that it is good if we see those healthy setbacks, these healthy corrections, like this current wave four, because it is the breathing in and the breathing out you know, of the market. You don't want it to rally too much and get completely exhausted. That's not really bullish, not necessarily. If you get a rally without structure, we've seen it many times in the bear market. It happened quite frequently, like with q and in the last, um, I think in the last week where we had a bit of a pump. I mean, it was not massive, but also it had no structure at all. So it broke down again. What you need is a move up, yeah, ideally fast, is okay, but not too much. And then you need to get those healthy setbacks as here at the moment, the wave four. In an ideal world, I'd like it to go a little lower actually, as indicated here. I mean, this is only an idea how the subwave structure could unfold, that the A wave is already done. The B wave might be done or is still unfolding. And then we get one more wave down in a C wave, maybe even hitting the trend line support and the 38.2 retracement at 29,180. 28.7K is support. So ideally I don't want price to break below it. And the good news is at the moment, this movement looks as if we are going to push higher eventually, but of course in the short term, it could go a little lower um, because the move down here or sideways looks very corrective. That means at least we do not deal with an impulse to the downside. That is important, yeah raising probabilities for a continuation to the upside. Still, it's all still probabilities. Therefore, we give the pivot point here. However, what wouldn't have been good, um, certainly what wouldn't have been uh, desirable here, if we had we seen an impulse down, yeah, a one, two, maybe another one, two. I mean, th this would have to be a five wave move down really to be bearish now. One, two, three, four, five. Now, we don't really see that. What we see is, a three wave move down could be an A wave. Now maybe a three wave move up in a B wave and then a five wave move down in a C wave. Um, okay, it doesn't need to go down that low, but what I want to indicate here is that the move down so far was in three waves, which is good. It looks corrective, a lot of overlaps. And if we see overlapping price action in wave four, that's exactly what we want to see because it indicates continuation to the upside. So it's going to be interesting. What I don't know is how long this takes. I, I could very much imagine that this might stretch out into Saturday because we deal with wave fours very often on a Saturday. Let's see, I mean, or the other idea is, because it already is decent size, the wave four now, that at some point today we make this fifth wave, which will also be a five wave move, right? That within the fifth wave, we have obviously five waves and we might do the one, the two, the three, and tomorrow and Sunday we deal with the wave four and then might get one more push. But who knows? Uh, it is often the case that on a weekend we deal with the wave four. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, at the moment, as long as we hold support, idea is to go higher. That's the pivot point below that level. Probabilities for this yellow C wave increase. But at the moment, we have no evidence for that. So at the moment, I'm in favor of further continuation to the upside. Okay, that's my update about Bitcoin. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.